All right, guys. Ah! Oh, we're officially back. I don't know if she's very happy about it. <laughs> so we have Harper and Sarah here, because today we are going to make five of the easiest beef recipes. So if you need some ideas and some more beef recipes, this is the place to be. Now, if you're wondering if we're getting any sleep, we are not. Now, I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm gonna share with you kind of the birth story of Harper. So that will be coming soon, so keep an eye out for it. All right, if you guys are ready, let's just jump into the recipes. The first recipe I'm making is our Italian steak marinara. All right, so we need some cut up steak. Now, I like to use these packages of steak. I need two pounds, so I needed two bags full of them. You can also cut up your own steak, have it cooked ready to go because it will make it a whole lot easier. All right, so my this is pre-cooked steak that is frozen, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump both bags into the freezer bag. Next, I cut up an onion into kind of, I don't know, medium-sized chunks and just dumped it in. Next, you're gonna add about two cups of fresh spinach. I highly recommend using fresh because using the frozen stuff just doesn't taste as good. So fresh spinach in there. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. On top of that, you're gonna add one teaspoon of basil. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Now you can add more salt if you want to, but I feel like one teaspoon is good here. Then you're gonna add about a half teaspoon of pepper. And then if you wanted to have a little kick, you can add a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I like the red pepper flakes but my kids didn't necessarily love the heat that it brought, so it's totally up to you. So on top of that, you're gonna add about one cup of your favorite marinara sauce, and then one can of Hunt's diced tomatoes. Then you're gonna take your tomato can and fill it about halfway full of water, and then just dump that into your bag. Oh wait, one last thing, I cannot forget the garlic, so I added about one garlic clove or about a teaspoon of garlic. Okay, I think we're all good, so I'm gonna take it off and go ahead and zip it up, get all the air out of there. You don't want air in your freezer bag, so try and get as much out as you can. Now there should be enough liquid in there to pressurize. If you're a little nervous or if it's really frozen, you can always add another half a cup of water and then push the saute button when it's over just to get that extra liquid out. But it's always better to have a little too much liquid than not enough so you won't get that burn notice. Now, this recipe is all thawed ready to go. I would highly suggest putting them in the in the fridge about 24 hours before you're gonna cook them because they will cook faster and you will have liquid. So you chances are of getting the burn notice are a lot slimmer. Anyways, you can just dump the whole thing into your Instant Pot. My favorite thing about making freezer mills. Then you know the routine, go ahead and put the lid on. Make sure that it's on correctly. Make, turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook or manual button. And we're just going to seven minutes because my steak is already cooked. It only needs to cook for seven minutes. Same with frozen. If it's frozen, still cook it for just seven minutes because the meat is already cooked. When it's all done, go ahead and turn that little knob to venting to let all the pressure out. Once the pressure's out, you can open up the lid and you guys, it's, this is one of my favorites, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> now, if it is a little too soupy for you, go ahead and push the saute button and get some of that liquid out. But for me personally, I like it like that because if you're gonna put it on noodles or rice, you kind of want it to have that sauce. Now, I sauteed some zucchini and this on top of the zucchini was actually amazing. If you're a zucchini fan, you have got to try this. It is one of my new favorite things to eat. Up next is our teriyaki beef skillet. Now you're gonna add about one pound of ground beef into the bottom of your skillet. So it's about medium high heat and you're gonna cook it for about, oh, four to five minutes. Next, you're gonna add one onion. Go ahead and mix that in and about two cloves of garlic. So we're gonna mix that into. Go ahead and cook everything until your onions are soft and your meat is no longer pink. Next, we're gonna add a fourth teaspoon of ground ginger and a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper. This just gives it a little bit of flavor. Then we're gonna add one cup of your favorite teriyaki sauce. I love teriyaki sauce. And go ahead and mix it all together. 
Now when it's all done cooking, go ahead and serve that over rice. I like to add a little bit of green onions on top just for a little bit of flavor. Now you know that I love the Instant Pot, so I'm gonna show you how to make our Instant Pot Italian beef roast. So you're gonna start with a two to three pound roast. Now you need a ranch packet, a gravy, au juice gravy packet, and some beef broth. Now I also like to add about a fourth cup of yellow peppers, but that's totally optional. So I'm putting my roast in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now you can sear it if you want to, but because it's a dump and go recipe, I am not gonna sear it. So I'm just putting it in the bottom, then I'm gonna add my ranch packet on top, then my au jus, or au jus, whatever, however you say it, that packet will also go on top. Next I'm gonna add my can of beef broth, so the can or about two cups of beef broth, and then about a fourth cup or so, of these yellow peppers. You don't have to add these, but I love the flavor that it gives it. Now, once everything is in, I didn't even mix it around or anything. I just went ahead and put the lid on. Now, you want to make sure your little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. Then you're gonna push the manual button or the pressure cook button. It's the same thing. It pressurizes both Instant Pots, whether you have the Lux or the duo. Now because this is two pounds, I'm gonna go up to 65 minutes. If it was three pounds, I would probably go to 80 minutes to cook it in the Instant Pot. Now after you set your timer, a few seconds will go by and then it will say on. That means you did it right, you can walk away. All right, oh, I forgot one thing. I wanted to add some more side dishes, so I'm gonna add some carrots and some potatoes. So I added about a pound of carrots and a pound of potatoes. Sorry about that. All right, when it's all the way done, I let it release on its own for about, oh, 30, 40 minutes. So all the pressure came out on its own. Then I went ahead and lifted up the lid. Now, if you want to cook this in the morning and you can let it sit on warm the rest of the day, it's like it could be a, like a slow cooker. It will make it taste so good and juicy if you just let it sit there on warm for a few hours. All right, when you are done, I just cut mine up. So we're gonna have roast beef sandwiches tonight with some melted cheese. It's one of my kids' favorite meals. And I love that we have side dishes with it. So we have some carrots and potatoes as a side dish and they taste good because of all the flavors that were mixed in there. The next one is one of my dad's specialties. He used to make this all the time. It's called Grandma's Goulash. All right, so on your Instant Pot, you're gonna push the saute button. There we go. Once it starts heating up, you're gonna add one pound of ground beef into it. So just gonna dump that in. Whoop, not that part. All right, and then I'm also gonna add one onion that we've chopped up into pretty small pieces. Just gonna throw that in with it. Next, I'm gonna take my lovely chopster. Now, I've talked about my chopster quite often, so if you haven't seen this yet, I'll put a link down below in the description. It is my most favorite, probably one of my most favorite tools in the whole kitchen. So it just breaks up your meat so easily as you cook. Once your meat is cooked pretty well, like it's almost all brown and your onions are getting a little bit tender, now it's time to add everything else in. So, okay, so first we're gonna add just one green pepper in there. Then we're gonna start adding in some of the sauces. So first we're gonna do like, this is 29 ounces of tomato sauce. Now this seems like a lot of sauce, but just trust me on this one, it's, it's gonna be good. So we have 29 ounces of that. Then we have two cans of diced tomatoes. We're gonna leave all the liquid in these two. Then we have one can of corn. Again, we're just gonna leave the liquid in because we're gonna cook our noodles in this at the same time. Then for some of our seasonings and sauces, we have half a cup of brown sugar. Now this is the secret, this is what makes it Grandma's goulash is the brown sugar in it. So we're gonna add three tablespoons of soy sauce and then one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Then we're just gonna mix it really well. Now we're getting pretty full. So if you have an eight quart Instant Pot, I would highly suggest cooking it in the eight quart, but we're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. Next we have one pound of elbow macaroni. Now I'm only gonna do half the box because I'm nervous that it's too full. So if you, you could do the whole box if you had an eight quart, but half the box, so just a half a pound, if you're gonna do just a six quart. So we're gonna dump in our macaroni. There we go. And then we're gonna add about a cup of water. So we need that water in there so that, 
So one, it will pressurize, and two, we'll get our noodles all cooked. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, so you're gonna make sure the lid is on all the way. Make sure this little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook button. Because we have to cook those noodles, we need to go to four minutes. So we're gonna go, here we go. <laughs> we're at 50, so we gotta go down right away. And because our hamburger is already cooked, you really just have to cook it for the amount of time that the noodles cook. So four minutes, once you set the timer, you can just walk away. All right, so now that the timer is done, it's been sitting here for about seven minutes or so, we're gonna turn this little knob to venting. Okay, now that all the pressure's out, you can open the lid safely. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. We're just gonna pour some into this bowl here so you can see it. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of salt and pepper, that's great. I didn't add a ton of seasoning, but it really doesn't need a lot because it has a lot of flavor in there. And then if you wanna put a little bit of cheese on top, serve it just like that with your kids and they will love it. And number five is our Instant Pot French Dip Sandwiches. All right, you're gonna start with a three pound roast. Now it doesn't have to be the best cut of meat because it's your Instant Pot, it will cook well. Next, you're gonna add two cans of beef consomme. I think that's how you say it. You can find those in the soup aisle. Then that is all it, there is to it. You're gonna put the lid on, make sure that it's sealed really tight, and you're gonna put it on sealing, not venting. I like to push the manual button. You can also push the meat stew button if you'd like, but they're pretty much the same. So I go manual and I'm going all the way up to 60 minutes. If your roast is frozen, you can do it for 120 minutes also. Then when it's done, you can either let it release on its own or you can flip it over and do a quick release. Now it's time to pull the lid off and it smells so good. So you can either take your roast out and shred it up or you can shred it right inside of your Instant Pot. Now when you're all done shredding it, you're gonna pull the meat out, kind of with a strainer, and put it to the side. You're gonna leave the drippings or leave the juice because that's what you're gonna dip your sandwich in. So now I'm getting my subs ready and I'm gonna put my meat right onto my bread. Now notice my bread is on a cookie sheet because I like to broil my cheese. You can put other things on here too. I like to add banana peppers, and my husband really loves jalapenos. So I'm making banana peppers for myself, and then the jalapeno sandwich for my husband. Next, I'm gonna add some provolone cheese, and then I'm gonna take this and broil in the oven for about a minute just so the cheese is melted. Then I'm gonna put my bun back on and dip it into my juice. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, if you want more beef recipes, I have some five ingredient beef recipes right up there. Okay, I'll see you guys next week, bye.